This painting of the Annunciation by Fra Angelico is probably the best known and the best loved of all the artist's paintings, and it is to be found in the north corridor of the Priory of San Marco or St Mark in Florence. Fra Angelico was not only a great artist, but he was also a member of the Dominican community at San Marco and had painted a series of remarkable pictures of the life of Christ on the walls of the monastic cells in the building as an aid to the monk's meditations. But this one, the Annunciation, dating from 1450, was painted at the top of some stairs which led to the corridor where the cells of the monks were to be found. It was in a key position, for every member of the community would pass this painting several times a day as they moved to and from the chapel and the refectory downstairs. It is a painting which can be looked at in various ways. First of all, it records the story of the Annunciation from St Luke's Gospel. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary at Nazareth. He greets her and tells her not to be afraid, for she was greatly troubled. He says that she will bear a son whose name will be Jesus, and this will come about through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary responds to the news that she is to be the mother of God by saying, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Artists have depicted this story in many ways. Some, some show Mary's surprise at her angelic visitor. Others portray her in great anxiety. Again, other artists depict her humble agreement to the will of God. This one, by Friar Angelico, shows us the point at which the angel greets Mary. And the artist told the brothers that every time they passed this picture, they too should greet Mary, saying, Ave Maria, or Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But in order to appreciate the full depth of this painting, we need to look at it a little more closely. For another interesting aspect of the painting is the way in which it encourages us to consider the two dimensions in which we live, the earthly and the heavenly, or the material and the spiritual. It does so through the use of space space that the artist himself has created. What we're really looking at here is a blank wall, but Fra Angelico has created a sacred space in which this divine encounter takes place. It is as though we are looking into a room, or rather a loggia or veranda, by using the skills of perspective and by careful use of light and shade, he has created a holy place where two dimensions come together, the divine and the human. And if you look at the painting, you will see that the left-hand side and archway is occupied by the angel and the right-hand side by Mary. And between the two, is a column. And this convention of separating the spaces is found in most paintings of the Annunciation. It is accentuated here by the use of shadow. Gabriel, as an angelic being from another dimension, has no shadow. Yet Mary, as a human being, casts a shadow behind her, by the stool. It's important to notice that these two spaces, divine and human, are separated only from the point of view of the observer. 
but for Gabriel and Mary, they occupy the same space in which there is a coming together of heaven and earth. And becoming conscious of these two dimensions or ways of being is something that we all may experience at particular times in our lives, perhaps in worship, perhaps when caught up in beauty or wonder or love. The birth of a baby is a special time when heaven and earth come close together and a child is born, in the words of William Wordsworth, trailing clouds of glory. Similarly, those who are present at the death of a loved one may become conscious of the slenderness of that which separates the two worlds in which we live. But this wonderful painting, as well as recording the Annunciation and helping us to reflect on these two dimensions, is also an image of the heart, that sacred space within us, where, more than anywhere, our humanity and divinity come together. Let's just look again at the painting and the space which has been created there. First of all, it is an open space. The space is defined by the arches and columns, but it's open to us as observers on one side, and the angel enters easily from a garden on the left, while in the background is a doorway and a window. Then, secondly, it is a simple space, quite uncluttered. Many paintings of the Annunciation show furniture, a lily, a dove, or a copy of the scriptures. But all there is in this space is a stool on which Mary sits to pray. Thirdly, it's a familiar space. The monks of San Marco would have recognised the columns and arches, for they are an exact copy of ones in the chapel and refectory of the Priory. And lastly, it's a space of encounter where two worlds come together. And all this is true of our own inner being, our heart, which essentially is simple and familiar, enclosed within us, yet open to encounter with the Divine. It's a place of preparation for watching and waiting, for praying and stillness. It is a space where heaven and earth are made one. For the Virgin Mary, this encounter led to the birth of Christ at Bethlehem, which we shall celebrate again shortly. For us, we pray that it may also be a time when Christ is born in our heart. The monks of the Priory of San Marco would pass and respond to this painting several times a day, a reminder that it's good for us to enter our own hearts several times a day in order to prepare and to pray. And the prayer we make in the stillness of the sacred space of our hearts is that Christ may be born in us, a prayer echoed by the familiar words of the carol. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. <laughs>